Hi, and welcome to Modernizing Code, Older Than You Are. This is the story of how one student took a COBOL banking application and brought it to hybrid cloud. I'm Misty Decker. I'm the Product Marketing Director for Mainframe Modernization at Microfocus. And joins me is this amazing student. His name is Sudanshu Dube, and he is a student at Guru Nanak da Dev Engineering College in Ludhiana. Um, we have done this project with the Open Mainframe Project, a part of the Linux Foundation. And it was sponsored by Microfocus with these mentors. Uh, we have Guy Sofer and Gary Evans and myself. And we spent the summer supporting and sponsoring Sudanshu as he did all of the work. <laughs> so this session here today is for him to tell you about this project and to let you see a bit of the results. So with that, Sudanshu, welcome. <laughs> Hello. Okay, so let's talk about the project. The aim of the project was to demonstrate the options for modernizing existing COBOL application to address the business needs and prove the future possibilities. And so we had the following tasks. Number one, to modernize the legacy banking application. Number two, generate the documentation required to understand and reproduce the uh, product. And number three, tell the whole world very loudly and clearly that if a student can do it, any business can too, using conferences, webinars, etc. So let's move on and look at the very first task, modernize the legacy banking application. This was the bulk of the project. And when a business modernizes a legacy applica application, their task is to make their sad customer into a happy customer. So let's see how we do it. But before that, you must be asking, what is application modernization? So I will say it is change because change is inevitable. But for business critical applications, change should be one, be gradual. Two, be carefully planned and precisely controlled. And three, have very low cost and very low risk. And this is this kind of change is what we are calling application modernization. Now move, moving on, let's see how to modernize COBOL applications. So for that, we have four steps. Number one, analyze the COBOL application. Number two, identifying services candidates. Number three, is isolating and exposing them as services. And number four, is connecting them to a new modern UI. So here we have a mainframe and a sad customer. He's sad because he's not able to access the mainframe in a way that he wants. Now moving on to the very first step, analyzing the COBOL application. So analyzing means understanding the architecture of the code and two, extracting business rules. Now what are business rules? So business rules are advanced way of documenting the code with additional info like the overall action that a set of line performs. Now this business rule extraction is done using Microfocus Enterprise Analyzer, and you can check this link out if you want to know more about the business rules and how they can be extracted. So let's move on to the next slide. And now we'll have a look at the original legacy application and we will see how we analyze and how we understood the application through the UI. So Misty, can you please uh, present the video? So here we are at the TN370 display, which is provided by Roomba. And let's clear the screen. Our purpose here is to analyze the original uh, legacy banking application we are entering the transaction bank and so this is the first part sign on part and we have some usernames which are valid so we will enter one of them the passwords can be any non-empty field 
so these are the features that the original bank application provides now i would like to note some things that uh, there is the screen number bank 20 and this is very helpful because it tells us exactly which screen we are using and because of the naming convention used in the legacy application in the code we can tell that uh, this whole like screen 20 is called by s bank 20 uh, p which is the program that manages the screen then there's the b bank 20 so there's the names are related of the programs that manage the same thing and there are three layers basically there is one layer of program that manages the screen that's called the screen layer then there is the business layer and then there is a data layer so the whole application can be divided into three layers and with the help of this screen name we can find out which programs are managing uh, which layer of the screen so let's continue uh, we can see that there are three not three actually there are six uh, options that we have uh, so let's explore them one by one so there's a display your account balance and we select it using by marking it slash and then pressing enter so now we are seeing the account information of the user desmond jones and we can see that there are four accounts here and saving checking actually five savings checking investment retirement and mortgage and these are the balances these are the last statement dates uh, the transactions are available for these two uh, accounts and these are the account numbers so this is one service that we have created uh, this one candidate that we are choosing for a service and eventually we will create it into a service so it says f4 to return so you press f4 and we are back at the screen and we will use tab to navigate so transfer funds between the accounts again we select it we enter it and here we can transfer we can enter the amount and we can transfer the funds but uh, i don't want to do it right now because i don't want to change the records too much so we'll just go back next we have the update contact information and this is another candidate that we are picking so uh, here you can see that it is showing some weird letters and there's actually some issue with the screen layer so the business layer is fine the screen layer is showing some issue and uh, in the actual service we are using the data layer so we are not getting these kind of issues also there should have been the present contact information here but it's not here so we just leave this service for now and we will just go back using f4 then we have the calculate uh, the cost of a loan now even though this uh, particular service or uh, this particular feature is part of this application but actually it can be extracted into this standalone uh, program because you can see there's there's no information related to the account so the authentication is not required for this one so we can just enter some amount okay so uh, please enter interest rate of the form 999 so i press enter uh, which is what we do in other applications but here we press enter only after entering all the information we navigate using tab so this is the interest rate uh, it requires a decimal and now we can press enter so we get this amount the monthly amount is 104.64 and let's go back so after the loan calculator we have the request print statements uh, we just see what it is so we can enter uh, a mail address this is actually the mail address of the user desmond jones the email address is not available uh, please use f10 to confirm request so if you press f10 it will just uh, say that yeah we are sending the account information account statements actually uh, but again you will not be actually getting it because i don't think anyone lives with this address or even if <laughs> they live we don't want to disturb them so we'll just go back 
the last one is obtain more information so let's see what that is so the information you can see is not available at this time you can try the website of microfocus or call at the office thank you for interest so this is just uh, showing us some information this is bank 90 screen uh, so we, are, uh, we don't need this we will just go back so as you can see uh, we have six options but uh, two of these are not really uh, any services these are just uh, this is information and this will basically do nothing uh, and we even don't want to do anything with this the transfer funds uh, will update the info in the data records and which is also what update content information does so when we are picking the services we can choose either of these and we just uh, pick this to make this into a service and we left this we could have used this one but uh, there was no it was like more of a personal option than and it's also like when you are actually doing it with your own application uh, you want to discuss uh, what your business needs and based on that you need to pick the services so here it was not much of a difference but when you are doing it on your own uh, with your own applications uh, you may need to cons uh, consult your managers and the authority to decide what services they want so basically we made four services out of these uh, the first one is the sign on which is which we used to authenticate uh, and then we had a display your account balance this, this was turned into a service update content information this was turned into a service and then this loan calculator was turned into a standalone uh, application and we used flask to make a ui of this one so now we will just go back we are done with here and we got a feel of the user uh, what the bank application actually is and how it works what it does so now we understand it now we can just go back so we will press f3 to quit and thank you for using microfocus products that's the message so we'll just disconnect so that was a long presentation a long video actually uh, but we saw what the actual ui was uh, and so that we can later on appreciate what the new ui looks like so uh, let's move on identifying services candidates so candidates are identified based on one high business value and two low degree of required code changes the result should be minimal required testing increased speed and lower risk now we use call maps case flow diagrams uh, executive reports, DFDs, etc., which are provided by Microfocus Enterprise Analyzer to pick these candidates. And here we have uh, a sample, like how the call maps look like and how there's auto clustering, which helps you better decide which, ca which candidates you want to pick. So uh, next slide. Now let's look at the target architecture that uh, we plan and we'll spend a few minutes here. So uh, you saw we had this big application. There were over uh, 60 files and there were six features. So out of these, we picked four services. The first one is sign-on application. The second is account balance. Third is update contact info. And the fourth is loan calculator. Now the sign-on application, like all of these three services, which are uh, being hosted from within Microfocus Enterprise Server, they are uh, using the Kicks Web services. Uh, for the communication. So sign on, as the name implies, we use it for uh, authentication. It, it works as a central authentication. So the other two services are using sign on to authenticate the user. And uh, then we have the account balance application, which basically shows the account balance. Uh, it is being uh, used by the Android app. So the Android app first uses sign on to authenticate. Then it shows the account balance using the account balance application. Uh, the other UI is the web UI, which is built using PHP, HTML, and CSS. And through that, you can update your contact information. Again, it uses sign on for the authentication. Uh, then we have this interesting case of the loan calculator application. So this loan calculator is a standalone DLL, uh, which is made from the COBOL code. So it is not using Microfocus Enterprise Server uh, for deployment. 
because it does not require that. It's a standalone DLL. And Python, we are uh, using the C types library of the Python to call this DLL directly. So here, the Python is directly interfacing with COBOL, which is not very much heard of uh, on the internet. And then we are using Flask to build a web UI. So this is the target architecture for services. All of these are hosted on the AWS cloud, but uh, because all of these have their own separate regions in the enterprise server, they can be taken out and hosted separately. So here we are doing it on one cloud, but they can be taken out and hosted on four different machines. They're logically independent. So this is the target architecture that we planned. Uh, yeah, so let's move on. Now here's the third step, isolating and exposing them as services. So once the service candidate is clearly defined, like we did uh, previously, the needed sources are gathered and they are safely extracted and isolated. And uh, we use MicroFocus Enterprise Developer for this uh, Enterprise Developer. Uh, so when you are extracting the service, you can uh, like there's there's a process to it, and you need to make a working code, but Using enterprise developer, we can do it very easily. Like it's not much of a work for a newbie like me. So these service candidates can be deployed together with the rest of the workload monolith or onto separate compute instances, like I said earlier. So we here we have the mainframe, we have extracted services, we have deployed them, but the customer is still sad because he does not know what is going on in the back end. So let's connect them to the to the customer, and for that, we build modern UIs. So Next, we create the interface for services. And for these interfaces, we have a lot of options. We have web service, we have RESTful service, we have Android apps, we have Flask web apps, and we have actually used in this project, we have used all of them. So let's see how our customer looks right now. We have the mainframe, uh, then there are the extracted services, and then we have used the modern UIs to connect them to the customer, and finally, is a happy customer. A good customer is a happy customer. So let's see how these UIs actually look like. And uh, first, we will look at the update context service. So, Misty, time for another video. So, here we have the update contact information service. Uh, this is PHP, HTML, CSS, and it's being hosted right now at the same cloud machine where the whole project is. So, first, we need to sign in. And this is actually utilizing the sign-on service that is there. And uh, let's see. So there are a uh, number of correct usernames that we can enter. And the password we can enter anything just in on empty. So it says, welcome, lucky locket. This is the username. And this is the information, we contact information. So this is all the contact information that are there in the records. So uh, this is user ID, username, address, state, country, postal code, telephone number, uh, send info by mail, no, send info by email, no. The email ID is empty. So let's update that. So we click on update. And these fields are now changed into text boxes, so we can change them. Uh, we just enter the email. Some fields are not editable, like telephone number and the username. So let's just enter uh, an email. Uh, lucky at the rate locate dot com dot com. And let's submit them. So it says update. Okay. Okay. And now it's again it went and it fetched the contact information from the records and we can see that the email id has been added here so we did not change anything else but the email id has been added so uh, now we can we can update again if we want uh, for example if we want uh, address to to be calling board i actually don't want to change the records much so let's just say it's 659 and submit okay so it's 659 now you can do it however much time you want uh, till you get the correct content information and then you can just log out and we are back at the sign-in service so yeah this was the update content information service it 
it actually utilizes two of the services. The first one is the sign on for authentication, then is the actual update contact information service. So that's it. Thank you. So that was the update contact service uh, in the PPT, in the PDF that uh, will be available to you. You can just click the link and you can experience the new UI on your own. Uh, let's move on to the next uh, video. And that will be of the account balance service, which is an Android application. So let's see. So here we have the account balance UI. This is in my Android phone. And so I'm using it from there. So let's sign in. There are a number of usernames that are valid and others are invalid. Passwords can be anything, just something non empty. Let's sign in. Uh, it seems there was an issue. So let's try again. And here we are. Welcome, Desmond Jones. So we have user ID, the username, and this is the account information. So it seems this user has uh, five types of funds that's savings, checking, investment, retirement, mortgage, and then there's the information as the balance of 91 dollars it seems and uh, some of them have have transactions available some of them don't have and the dates are in uh, some other format but that can always be changed whenever you uh, build this ui on your own so this is the information this is the ui where we are in the app and we are contacting with the account balance service now again there are we are using two services here the first one was the sign-on service uh, that we use to authenticate the user and then we are using the account balance service to fetch the data that is there uh, in the COBOL application. So we are using COBOL service to fetch the data, kick the service to be more precise and we have the data in, in our own application. So this is the account balance UI. Thank you. So that was the Android application that is uh using the COBOL service, the KQS service to fetch the account information. And let's move on to the last video, which will be the loan calculator. It's a flash web UI. So let's see how it looks. So here we have the loan calculator service and we have three fields that we need to enter the loan amount, the loan terms and the loan interest rate. So let's enter them. We can enter any value that we want and let's see so it's saying that the monthly payment amount is in dollars 1141.31 this is the amount that we need to pay if we wanted a loan of the amount that we entered now let's try another loan and uh, So that's another value, $104.64. But there are some validations in place. So for example, if you enter zero months as the loan term, then it will say that please enter a non-zero term. Now these validations are happening at the COBOL end. So it's not Flask that is doing this validation. It's uh, COBOL that are checking these values. Similarly, if you enter anything above 100 because it's in percentage, so decimal point missing misplaced. Oh, so loan interest needs a decimal point. So we need to enter the decimal point even though we are entering a wrong value. So outrageous, 100% or more. So there are some validations that are in place uh, that are being done in the COBOL side and so the loan calculator service. So that was the loan calculator service. And again, you can check this link uh, to experience this UI, to use it, to uh, test it out, whatever you want. So that was the last video. Let's move on with the slides. Okay, no, so the next step uh, after we have built all the code, all the UIs and everything, 
The next step is to generate the documentation because an open source product or an open source project always needs good documentation so that others can use it and contribute to it. So let's move on. Now we have written technical documentation. Everything is in the repository. The documentation includes the original architecture, the target architecture, and uh, then there is the guides to extract the required code and create enterprise developer projects. There's guides on how to configure enterprise server regions and the how to deploy the modern UI. There's all this stuff and then there's more, like everything that you need to reproduce a project, uh, everything is there on the GitHub repo. Here we have a QR code. So you can scan this QR code uh, right now to reach the GitHub repository uh, and access all the codes and the documentation that is there. Now the next slide. So apart from the technical documentation, I've also written blogs. Uh, the first one is stepping through the door to the mainframe world, which uh, basically uh, tells about my journey from being a normal student to this cool student who works with the mainframe. So uh, that was one blog. The next blog is the Cobalt Modernization, the way forward in which I introduced this project and why it is necessary, why we are talking about it, why we are doing it. There's a third blog, uh, analyzing the application older than you are. So in which I detail uh, the process I follow to analyze and understand the legacy application. So there's all these blogs and there are more coming up. Uh, uh, there's again, you can scan this QR code to reach the blog site of the open mainframe project and where you can see my blog and you can see all the other blogs that the other students, the, the mentees have written and you can, you can first read the docu technical documentation, then you can check out these blogs. Or if you are more into the literary stuff, you can first read the blogs, uh, get the basic idea, then you can go on with the technical documentation. So that's your wish. We have both things for you. Now moving on. The last but not the least step is spreading the words, presenting it, uh, our project at different conferences and webinars. So let's see where all we have been and where all we have talked about this project. So the first one was the Enterprise Computing Conference uh, where we presented this project. That was our first uh, conference together. The next was the 2021 Share Virtual Experience. Uh, there also it was a very good experience uh, presenting with the audience. And then uh, we had a webinar with Microfocus modernizing code older than you are, one student's journey. And uh, the next one was the Open Mainframe Summit. In that, uh, our uh, presentation was a part of a bigger session. So uh, you can check that out, out also. And now we are here at the Open Source Summit and we are live in front of you. I'm not live, we are pre-recorded, but yeah, we are here. So you can scan this QR code uh, to reach the recording of the webinar is freely available. You can check it out or you can, if you have the PDF, you can check the other links that I have uh, linked with the text to reach uh, the slides and the sessions. So yeah, now for the conclusion. The one line conclusion is COBOL modernization is a simple and doable process. When I say simple, I mean it's a well-defined process. And when I say doable, I mean, there are excellent tools available, but there's more. This process, this cobalt modernization is urgent. Why it's urgent? Because I've linked one link that FDIC chief states, legacy systems as the number one concern for banks, but you can check the internet and you can see uh, people are talking about it. People are saying why uh, right now COBOL is required, COBOL developer are required and COBOL modernization is required. You can check the internet on, on your own. But the one thing that we want to tell you, the one thing that we want to tell the whole world is that COBOL modernization is a simple and doable process and it's urgent. So yeah, that's that's it from my, uh, from my side. And over to you, Misty. <laughs> thank you, thank you for Sudanshu. Uh, very, very informative. And I, I wanna stress that the urgency part of this um, let me end sharing. Oh, Stop presenting. There we go. Um, yeah. This is about 
mainframe applications run the world and COBOL is a very large percentage of those applications. This is critical infrastructure, IT infrastructure for the world. Um, but those applications really are aging. The mainframe technology itself continues to evolve. There's a lot of extremely advanced features capable in the hardware, in the operating system. It's those applications that are often what is seen as being old and outdated. So this effort is critical. Those applications can be modernized in place on the mainframe. Uh, Sudanshu's project was to modernize them in the cloud, demonstrating both the capabilities of modernizing the application as well as the options for deploying it in multiple platforms. Um, but each journey is unique and it depends on your particular situation and your particular applications. And what we asked Sujanshu to do was to empower you by proving that it's possible and to motivate you to look at your own applications and figure out what the right thing for you to do is. So we're going to open it up to questions, but before we do that, I just want to give a big shout out to Sudanshu. <laughs> we gave him a big, big job here. Um, we gave him a big, big job here to do something that a lot of industry professionals are afraid of doing, and he dove into it. Um, learned very quickly and developed this uh, modernization of this uh, massive monolithic COBOL application, um, broke it into uh, microservices and built a new user front end uh, in just a few months. So obviously he could have done much more, but, but the, if he had more time, the potential here and the talent here is significant. Um, but uh, he's he's a future bright star in our mainframe space, and I'm excited to have been able to work with you, Sudanshi. So thank you. <laughs> it was it was my pleasure to work with you and the as a mentors and of the Open Mainframe project. So everyone thank everyone you. is was wonderful <laughs> during the project. So definitely connect with Sudanshi on on LinkedIn and Twitter. Um, all right, so I guess we'll take some questions now. Yeah. <laughs> 